Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. You have finally reached a recap for season number 17, episode number 16, and this is the one they have been teasing us about the entire season of what I'm looking at on Prime Video says 35 episodes. You can take off half because obviously those are going to be those after party episodes. But here we are, we are about two weeks away from D-Day. And as you know, without further ado, like I always like to say, let's just get right into this review. So we are here with Chloe and Michael on their fourth day of marriage and they're in bed literally talking about nothing much okay i tell you this if i if they had anything interesting to talk about i promise you i would bring it up in the recap i believe it was michael who was like it snowed last night do you guys think that we're stupid this doesn't even look like real snow this looks like a picture that you guys put up to make it look like snow you guys lifetime y'all producers really are grasping at straws and it's sad to see that you guys are making us suffer for your own benefit. Two weeks until decision day, and Becca and Austin are getting ready to go on this couple's retreat. Austin is hoping for relaxation and maybe an escape to the bedroom to do what they want. What are you gonna do in there, um, Austin? What are you gonna do in there? Absolutely nothing. Austin says they should work on the stuff that Dr. Pia talked about. Becca is all excited because she thinks she's going to get her some Nikki. Okay, that's the only reason why she's excited. But anyway, Becca says that she would love to work on those things with him. Now, I'm trying to understand for the life of me why you guys invited people who are not still couples, they're not still couples, to a couples retreat. You guys really, really are making these people hold to these contracts, aren't you? Because you guys know you would have no freaking show if you didn't suck these people who are no longer together back onto the show. And Claire, you know damn well Cameron ain't going to be on camera ever again. You know this. So I don't know why you keep getting on here, running your mouth about how you're so sad that Cameron has to do everything on his own and blah, blah, blah. Claire, for some strange odd reason, is getting ready for a couple's retreat, which she says she doesn't even want to call it a couple's retreat. But ma'am, it's a couple's retreat and you should have declined to go because why? Because you're not in a couple. So now Emily and Brennan, they're leaving for the retreat and she says that she's feeling kind of blah about Brennan, like we all are and have been for weeks, has just resided to the fact that this is just going to be how it is. And she says that she's ready to focus on pretty much just being together with everybody else and not so much her and Brennan and you know just a, a last hurrah before decision day but of course she's still hoping that Brennan will realize he's made no effort which he won't because he doesn't care she says that he should but she won't basically won't hold her breath now Becca and Austin are off to the retreat and Austin is excited to see the newest married couple, Chloe and Michael. He wants to see what Chloe is like in person. Becca is most excited to you know what, you know what. Okay, she's been excited for that. It's not happening, but she's still, she's still hoping, okay? And um, she says that she's excited to spend time with her people. Emily and Brennan. They're also on their way to the retreat. Emily thinks Michael and Chloe are coming a couple days later. Brennan wonders why they're coming later and Emily's like, well, you know, they might still be honeymooning or whatever. Brennan says that he thinks that they're on the same page. He's talking about Emily. He thinks him and Emily are on the same page and I am so tired of this phrase. I am so sick and tired of day by day. I am so sick and tired of being on the same page, blah, blah, blah. Brennan's goal, he says, is to have fun spending time with friends. It's making him feel a lot more comfortable. Note, he says it's making him feel a lot more comfortable, meaning now that the quote pressure is off, it's making him feel more comfortable. But how does it make Emily feel? You're such a jerk. Anyway, Michael and Chloe, um, they moved into the shared space. They love it, apparently. Michael's feeling great love the honeymoon but he's glad to be back in real life and he says pretty much they'll learn each other's comfort zones and continually adjust to that so chloe says none of this felt real and now it's starting to hit home so that you know made her a certain type of way the, the other day or whatever that week was that she was being you know feeling stressed or anxious 
he's basically trying to like redecorate the rental like thinking of what would look good here what would look good there y'all not y'all only gonna be in the rental for like a week so i don't even know why you're going there i don't even know why you're trying to make it your home make it your own when y'all ain't gonna be there that long chloe is acting interested but um ma'am it's written all over your face <laughs> You don't have to say a word. I'm just saying, okay? Michael tells Chloe this morning he was excited to get back into the real world and that this is their first real world moment. And Chloe says that she's an introvert by nature. I don't know if I believe that because you be lying, girl. You be lying. And anyway, regularly she says that she would have gone to her own place and processed this stuff by herself. But now she's stuck with someone, okay? And she has to decompress together and she has a fake smile. And I will tell you this, um, Chloe, um, I will tell you this with the cringy moments that you've had in this episode here and um, the fact that you are letting everything show on your face. I am really starting to not dislike you so much because it's obvious that you're uncomfortable. It's obvious that this is not ideal for you. And if we're being completely real, he's not your type. OK, he's definitely not your type. And you're saying you keep saying you need to adjust. You need to adjust. And if somebody was your type, there would be no adjustment. He'd just be your type. Austin and Becca reach the rental home for this retreat before everybody else, and it's beautiful. Becca mentions that it belongs to a celebrity sports person. I guess he plays football, but but yet doesn't bring up whose house it is. Girl, I, if I wanted, I really wanted to look it up, I could find out whose house it is, but you know what? I really don't care enough. I'm being quite honest with y'all, okay? If you find out, you can put it in the comment section and let me know because I'm lazy. Anyway. The next people that show up are Brennan and Emily. Brennan comes in and surprisingly to us, because we didn't know that they were sleeping in separate rooms, but apparently he wants to sleep in separate rooms on the retreat. What kind of couples retreat are y'all having? Where you're inviting people who aren't couples and now you're inviting people that aren't even sleeping in the same darn room. Interesting. And none of this, by the way, the, the fact that they were sleeping in separate rooms, from what I know and from what you guys have been watching, because I've been doing all of the recaps, I never heard this brought up at any of the counseling sessions. That would have been important to bring up, don't you think? Emily says that she's not surprised that Brennan took the friend approach and decided that they needed to be in separate rooms. And honestly, me personally, I would be relieved not to have to share a room with a freaking moron. All right, I'd be very relieved. Emily says that she's not keeping her hopes up. And the more that she stays hopeful, the more she's going to be disappointed. So she'd rather just not be hopeful. Girl, that is a terrible way to think. But I guess you guys are stuck in this contract until the end of the show. And now Orion's showing up. What the hell? Why are these people here? I don't understand. I don't freaking understand, y'all. Especially him. He's annoying. And Claire is the next one to show up. And another person, not in a couple, showing up at the retreat. So... Lauren says that she really hasn't spoken to Orion since the wedding and it's disappointing. She says that based on what Orion said at Michael and Chloe's wedding, he wanted to be friends. But friendship requires effort, which he's putting nothing. He's putting no effort into trying to be friends. She says that it's very exhausting hearing Orion say he wants to initiate contact and he wants to be friends, but then there's never any follow through. Lauren is hoping for some bonding with the wives. Oh look, Brennan looks so happy hugging Lauren. And he can't look that happy when he's hugging Emily. <laughs> In fact, he doesn't like hu hugging Emily. He doesn't like touching Emily at all. But anyway. So everybody's sitting around the table, as you can see. They're having a little family dinner. And Lauren talks about how it's going to be fun for them all, you know, to hang together. And Emily brings up how she booked an ATV with Brennan. And Claire is like, for all of us? And then he's like, girl, girl, no, I am I am so sorry. So Emily was saying how, you know, her and Brennan did water, they did snow. And Austin is over here like, you know, keep rubbing it in. And then Austin says this. I hope you both crash and <laughs> get serious. <laughs> I mean, road please rash. don't because we know my track record. <laughs> Why the F would you say something like that, Austin? You're a freaking weirdo. And you know, words have power. I don't know if you guys believe that words have power. But you really have to be careful the negative things that you speak on your life and on other people's lives because you see what happened at the end of the episode. That's not a secret. I'm not spoiling anything. You already seen the trailer. Austin, but you need to watch what you say out of your mouth in the future. So Claire wants to take the word couples out of the retreat. And ma'am, I just want you to take yourself out of the retreat. Girl, shut up, please. She's saying how she's going to just take this uncoupled time with the group 
to regroup. Orion is yapping and flapping his freaking onion freaking lips. He's yapping and yapping his lips, stating what everybody just wants to hear. I'm here to open the dialogue and all this bullcrap he was talking. He says that he feels proud of where him and Lauren are, but he's looking to turn the page on everything that's happened and try to open up a different narrative. Orion, stuff it. Okay, so Lauren's talking off camera. She's not talking to him. But Lauren says she's tired of convos with Orion. When he brings certain things up in group, it doesn't seem real. Doesn't seem authentic. Because he's not authentic. He's a liar. All right. He, she says that it's just to save face in front of everybody. And Orion says he's glad that Lauren is here. It makes him somehow feel better. Child, nobody cares about how you feel. You're fake behind anyway. So everybody goes off to their prospective bedrooms. And what's with the sexy music, y'all? Because ain't nothing happening in any of these bedrooms. So Becca and Austin kiss. I'll make their little kissing noises. Say I love you and go to bed. But one hour later, Austin, who is drunk, by the way, gets up out of the bed, says that he's going into the big bedroom, tells Becca she can come if she wants. And Becca's sitting there like, um, are we going to do something in this big bedroom? Or like, what are we doing here? After Becca says, are we going to do something? Austin's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Becca was like, it didn't seem very inviting. It didn't seem like, you know, he was like, come on, let's go. Left her feeling very strange. So now we're back here with Michael and Chloe. And Michael brings Chloe coffee and says it might be garbage. Fool, I don't want you bringing me anything to drink or eat. Telling me that it might be garbage. That is not very advertising. It's not going to make me want to drink it. Chloe says that she was overwhelmed by everything with the moving in. It's been a lot for her emotionally. And she says now she's feeling happy, peaceful, hopeful. Girl, do you have a book of adjectives or something laying around? Because we get it. Okay, we get it. Michael says that he hopes that she's not being too hard on herself. And he admits that he is overwhelmed as well. They just have a different way of expressing themselves. Chloe claims that she doesn't think there could be a better match than Michael, says that he's been a great support system and both of them will be seeing each other's separate living spaces like they always do on the show. I hate that I'm doing stuff so late in the season that I've freaking done already, okay? Just to let y'all know. Now, Claire and Lauren are playing basketball and Lauren says it's always good when they get together as a group. Claire was apprehensive about coming, as I've said earlier. But Claire admits that it's very healing and free, and she has people to talk to, so it feels good to be supported. She says that she wants to have a conversation with Cameron. I am so tired of you talking about Cameron. Okay, he doesn't matter. He's never going to show up on the show again. I hope you know that, Claire. He's never coming back on the show again. She has issue with the way he deals with getting support. But we're all different people, Claire says pretty much so lauren says that it's normal to be realistic about how they feel like being fake and phony saying oh they're okay they're okay it's okay to not feel okay she says that their marriages didn't go how they thought they would but they can still get growth from this experience and lauren says she feels good about being there it just feels weird claire claims that her and cameron are on good terms girl he doesn't even want to talk to you on the phone Anyway, Lauren says that her and Orion aren't on any terms, which makes it weird because Lauren says he says one thing to the group, but he doesn't really talk to her about anything. And Lauren says that she's on the fence about talking to Orion. Girl, on the fence about what? Girl, throw him over the fence and leave him on the other side. I don't, I'm not understanding what, what is the um, confusion. What is, what is hard about not wanting to F with him anymore? I'm going to need you to get some self-esteem, ma'am, okay? I'm going to need you to get some self-esteem. You're just, a, you're an Amazon. You're a tall beauty. You have some nice natural hair. You be doing some cute little hairstyles, but you need some self-esteem, obviously. If you have self-esteem, you're not going to put up with any old bull crap. And Orion is definitely some bull crap. She says that every time she talks to Orion, she leaves more confused. And she says that she still feels the lingering of tension between them. But she's not interested in a relationship, in any type of relationship with Orion because she doesn't know what she would gain out of that. And now we're here with Michael and Chloe again with the freaking house visits. And why are we packing a golden pineapple, ma'am? I don't understand. Chloe, I thought you said that you were a minimalist. This is your closet talking about you're a minimalist, Chloe. Give me a freaking break. Then a weird unnecessary scene of Chloe being a weirdo, putting on a duvet on her bed like it's the hardest thing she ever had to do in her freaking life. 
And somehow we are now at a scene where Michael wants to try on Chloe's grandma's jewelry. I don't know if it's a grandma's jewelry, but it looks like it's grandma's jewelry. Alrighty then, Michael. Chloe says that she's not sure how she feels about Michael launching into his feminine side. Michael says that he might start borrowing her accessories. I could not be with a man that needs to borrow my earrings. I'm really sorry. I don't care. It's not about homophobia or anything like that. I don't like sharing, okay? And I want a man who's not going to want any of the stuff that I have. Like, seriously, I don't want to share. So now, presumably, we're at Michael's apartment. Why does it look like the same apartments that you guys already stayed in? Lifetime, y'all not slick. Y'all are really not slick. Michael's closet looks just like Chloe's closet. In fact, she looks like she had way more stuff in her closet and so michael does everything need to be a sermon or does everything need to have an explanation like an overly pseudo intellectual conversation think piece does everything need that god you're really starting to annoy me i'm really sorry but you talk too damn much i already said that you got you talk too damn much so Chloe says that Michael's closet wasn't as overwhelming as she thought it would be. Michael likes how accepting Chloe has been of his clothes choices. And Chloe says that she's never in a million years thought that she would be with a man like Michael. So you're finally being honest with the audience and yourself. Interesting. Chloe says she never in a million years thought she would be married to a man that owns more skirts than she does. She says that he takes it to the next level. So, so like I said earlier, Chloe, I'm starting to dislike you less because I can see you finally starting to be real about the fact that you really don't like Michael and his ways. And she even tells the cat, your dad wears skirts. Girl, she's not feeling him. I'm just telling y'all right now. You already know, but she's really not feeling him. So now Austin and Becca are at the spa and damn Becca, that's a big bra girl. I wish I had a bra that size. That's all I'm going to say. They signed up for some escape package and she says that she's feeling better this morning. She felt defeated and rejected when Austin spent the night in the other room. Austin did apologize that morning. She says that she's still hopeful to have their first uninterrupted night together on the retreat. I don't know who this man is, but he is fine. But anyway, who is this guy? They don't put his name at the bottom of the screen. I'm really sorry, guys. But this is like the, I don't know. He's like the leader of the pack, the leader of the spa. I don't know what the hell to call him because they didn't give me his name. You could have made up a name for him lifetime. Damn. They're all going into this sauna room and they're going to be beaten with um branches and leaves that's exactly what's gonna happen not in a bad way i guess but they're just gonna get tapped a bit with some leaves and branches becca says that she was expecting a couple's massage but that was different she says that it was surprisingly relaxing so like i said they're getting beat with leaves and twigs they're climbing into ice cold water becca says that she thinks a spa day is a great activity for couples so austin's here after they're done and he asks her how it was becca said it was great she says that she's never seen him look more sexy and is feeling intimate and asks austin if he feels the same way and austin says yes and he says that they have their ups and downs but they're working on it and things are getting better and becca says marriages have trials and tribulations but the whole point is to push through and figure it out together Michael feels an extra level of comfort and he feels like it's a good start to the weekend. He actually asks Chloe to borrow the earrings that she's currently wearing. Bruh, you're doing too much. You are too much. I mean, if that's like I said, if you are too much and that's just who you are. I don't really know what to say about that. So now Michael and Chloe are having a visit from Pastor Cal and pastor cal you guys are you patting y'all selves on the back for making a better match that's what you think you think this is a better match now i'm beginning to just believe you're all liars chloe says that she doesn't know if she would have been able to marry a stranger back in the day but she says that this man is wearing her jewelry and michael says that they're fully leaning into it and chloe says he's been eyeballing her earrings and her ears like basically trying to give pastor cal a clue like this guy is freaking weird Okay. Pastor Cal asks Chloe what her feelings are about this unorthodox human that they've matched her with. And she says that she's not used to a man wearing her earrings. And Pastor Cal asks Chloe if that's okay with her. He says it's okay if you're not okay with it. And Chloe says that Michael is vastly different from any man she's ever been with romantically. In other words, he's not her type and she's not feeling it. 
She says a man that leans so heavily into his feminine side is new to her and it's not something that she expected and it's going to take some time to adjust to. So Michael admits that he does have a feminine masculine side as per Pastor Cal and Pastor Cal says how it's so unfair that the nurturing side is more female related or looks to be feminine. Um, I want to wear grandma's pearls, grandma's earrings. That's not exactly a masculine trait. And it's okay. He doesn't have to be masculine. I'm just saying what it, this is what's just what I believe. All right. This is just what I think. So Chloe basically says Michael is not the man that she would have chosen for herself. She's clearly telling you she's not into him. Okay. Pastor Cal. Anyway, she's saying she asked for a man with a heart of gold. If this, if this additional stuff that he's into is part of that then she just has to adjust basically pastor cal says as long as there's mutual comfort and respect that's a good foundation it's like he's begging them to stay together <laughs> you guys you did a terrible job matching these people they're not staying together that's really all they talked about they didn't talk about anything special as usual pastor cal is just hoping upon all hopes that they don't split up and make the experts look even worse so now to end off the show brennan and emily are atv riding and all of a sudden they do they do not show us exactly what she hit or what she knocked but we just see the atv tumbling and the next thing we see on our screen is emily she's bleeding she's bloody I'm really surprised she's not screaming because I would have been screaming my head off. That would have been some huge entertainment for all of you guys if I was on this show and this happened to me. Emily was very calm, surprisingly. Brennan was very supportive. He was holding her hand. I will say that the Lifetime people really got the emergency people up there really quickly on one note. But on the other note, how dare you use an accident where she could have got a freaking brain injury to boost your ratings on your mother freaking show. I'm freaking over it. So they come, they get her, they take her to the emergency room, and that is where the show ends off. That is the end of my recap. I knew this would be a short recap because the notes were just too short. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.